So we are going to prove that the space-time interval ct squared minus x squared is invariant under Lorentz transformation, and therefore it's the same in every inertial reference frame. In order to do that, let's start by taking a look at some eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now we know that when we apply the Lorentz transformation, the speed of light has to stay the same. In a space-time diagram, a light ray is described by the vector 1, 1, because this means that for every time t equals 1, the displacement is c, the speed of light. We could also have a light ray going in the opposite direction, in which case we're looking at negative 1, 1, because the spatial direction is backwards. Both of these, when we apply the Lorentz transformation, have to keep going in the same direction. Their direction has to stay the same, because that's the only way they stay the same speed. The slope of a line is what determines its speed. And therefore, when we apply this matrix to 1, 1, the result that we get is a multiple of 1, 1. That's how it preserves the direction. And similarly, if we apply the matrix to negative 1, 1, we're going to get a multiple of negative 1, 1. That's what it means to be an eigenvector. So 1, 1 and negative 1, 1 those are eigenvectors of any Lorentz transformation. Now, let's take a look at this diagram more up close. We have a really big diagram here. And let's say we have some point here given by x comma ct. What I want to do is consider projecting this point onto each of these eigenvectors. And we're going to project it down just like this, so we have a 90 degree angle there and we're going to project it in the opposite direction, just like this. And that's going to give us our two scalar projections. The scalar projections of x, c, t onto 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. So we have these two scalar projection values. And the question is, what if we apply the linear transformation? What if we do a Lorentz transformation on this point? What's going to happen to these two scalar projections? Well, when we look at these two scalar projections, we can think of these as two different vectors. One vector pointing along 1, 1, and the other vector pointing along negative 1, 1. And we can see that if we add this vector projection to this vector projection, 1, 2, we get back to the original point. So we can write x, comma, ct as a linear combination of 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. When we apply the Lorentz transformation, we can apply it to each of these components separately. Now we know that they're both eigenvectors. So when we apply the transformation to this vector, it's going to get scaled up by some amount. And we're going to end up maybe over here. This is the transformed version of this vector projection. And on the other hand, this vector might get squished down. It's going to stay in the same direction, but maybe it gets smaller like this. So now our new point, after we transform, is going to end up right over here. This is our x prime ct prime. The question is, what is the product of these two scalar projections now? Well, let's look at each of the projections individually. With this first vector projection, along 1, 1, when we apply the linear transformation, it's going to get scaled up by whatever the eigenvalue is of 1, 1. Let's call that eigenvalue lambda 1. So we define this to be the eigenvalue of this vector. On the other hand, for negative 1, 1, it's also an eigenvector. So it's also going to get scaled by its eigenvalue when we apply the transformation. Let's say that eigenvalue is lambda negative 1. So if we look at the product of these scalar projections after the transformation, that product is going to be the original product times lambda 1, that's how much this one got changed, times lambda negative 1, that's how much this one got changed. Now one fact we know from linear algebra is that if we have a two-dimensional transformation with two different eigenvectors, the product of their eigenvalues, this is equal to the determinant of the transformation. And so all we have to do now is figure out what's the determinant of a Lorentz transformation. And to do that, we can take a look at the matrix. 
The matrix of a Lorentz transformation is gamma times 1, negative beta, negative beta, 1, where gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared. But notice the determinant of this matrix right here is 1 minus beta squared. And so when we compute the determinant of this entire thing, since this is a 2 by 2 matrix, we have to multiply by gamma squared when we do the determinant. But gamma squared is 1 over 1 minus beta squared. And so this part is actually going to cancel the determinant of this matrix. And so the determinant of the Lorentz transformation is 1. So this is telling us that the product of the two eigenvalues is 1. And when we apply the Lorentz transformation to x comma ct, the product of these two scalar projections, that product gets multiplied by lambda 1, lambda negative 1, which we said is equal to 1. In other words, it stays the same because multiplying by 1 does nothing. So when we apply the Lorentz transformation, it does not change the product of these two scalar projections. All we need to do now is figure out what that product is, and we have an invariant, something that stays the same in all inertial reference frames. So let's figure out what that is. We want the scalar projection of x comma ct onto 1, 1 times the projection of x comma ct onto negative 1, 1. I'm using this notation here to refer to the scalar projection. Now we know the formula for the scalar projection is given by this first vector 1, 1 dotted with x comma ct divided by the magnitude of 1, 1. And the formula is going to be the same here, except we're replacing it with negative 1, 1 up there. So what is 1, 1 dotted with x comma ct? Of course, that's ct plus x. And this on the bottom is the square root of 2. This part, if we do negative 1, 1 dotted with x ct, that gives us ct minus x over root 2 again. So the product of these two, this is going to give us ct squared minus x squared divided by 2. So this value is invariant under a Lorentz transformation. And of course, if we multiply by 2, 2 is a constant. That's not going to change anything. So ct squared minus x squared, this is invariant under Lorentz transformation. ct squared minus x squared is the same in all inertial frames. And that's because this value tells us the product of the scalar projections onto each of the light ray eigenvectors. But because the determinant of the Lorentz transformation is 1, the product of these two eigenvalues is 1. So when we apply the transformation, one projection is going to get stretched out, but one is going to get squished down by the exact same factor. Those are going to multiply to 1, so this is always going to stay the same.